In this video, we take a look at the different uses of hashing. So hashing, or more precisely a hashing function, transforms a string of characters into a fixed length value or key that represents the original input string. A hashing function contains an algorithm that converts the inputted data. Popular hashing algorithms include SHA1 and MD5. Since the hash value is generated from the entire input message, even a slight change in the original message produces a totally different hash value. So you might be asking now, how is hashing any different from other encryption techniques that we discussed in earlier videos? After all, encryption also aims to turn human readable input into unreadable output. The main difference is that hashing is a one way process. You cannot get back to the original value from the hashed value even if you have access to the original hashing algorithm. And this is the important difference. So when might we use hashing? Let's look at a couple of examples. Well, it's ideal for preventing information like passwords and pins from being read by a hacker. In this example, students are signing up to an online revision program. During account creation, they choose a username and password. These details need to be stored in the system, so when the students next log in, their account and associated password can be checked. Now clearly it would be an incredibly bad idea for the system to store the passwords in plain text as shown here, although to be honest these users need some education in what makes safe passwords, but that's another video. By applying a hashing function to the passwords as they are entered by the user, we neither have to send the password in plain text to the online system or store the password in plain text in the online system. Any hacker who accesses the password file will only be able to see the hashed values of the passwords. As the hash is one way, the hacker can now not obtain any actual passwords from the information they've obtained. The next time a user attempts to log in, their password needs to be checked. To verify the user's password, the system needs to apply the hashing function to the password entered, send it off, and then compare the hashed value to the one stored. Once again, at no point is the password being sent to the system in plain text. And even if the hashed password is intercepted in transit, it can't be reverse engineered to work out the user's original password. Hashing can also be used for quick searching, insertion and deletion of data from data structures. Imagine the address table shown on the right here is held in main memory. By using hashing, we don't need to search memory to find an entry. We just input what we're looking for and apply a hashing function to immediately find the item we want. The items don't even need to be sorted. Now, on average, this means hashing provides a constant O1 time complexity. Now, we're going a bit beyond the scope of this video, but we're actually going to be looking in a lot more detail at hash tables and algorithm time complexity in a later section. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is hashing? <laughs>